I've been wanting to make a comprehensive video about Battlefield 5 for some time now, and with multiple people asking me to do the same, I decided to go through with it. Well, here we are. Two years after Battlefield 5's reveal, and Battlefield 5 is an absolute mess of a game. The content updates have been entirely cut, the player base has dwindled, and cheaters continue to run rampant, and EA DICE continue to ignore the real issues. How did we get here? Why did Battlefield 5 fail the way it did? What should have been done differently? I'd like to preface this video by saying that this is intended to be feedback directed at making Battlefield games better for everyone. My only hope is that the developers who watch this video take no offense and take something positive away from it that they could hopefully use in future titles. For everyone watching this video who doesn't know who I am, I want to introduce myself. I'm a Battlefield streamer and competitive player for a team called The Omniscient, who started taking Battlefield more seriously midway through Battlefield 1's life cycle when I started streaming. I started playing Battlefield way back in Battlefield 3, and I've streamed nearly every single day of Battlefield 5's life cycle, including the very first day of the first alpha. Many people consider me to be one of the best infantry players to come about in recent years, but I don't personally claim that title. As a high-level player of the game who has logged more than 1,000 hours, I believe that my feedback regarding gameplay mechanics and general changes provides some good insight into how Battlefield 5 has proved to be a frustrating experience at every turn, and what changes need to be made for the better. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get into it. Why did Battlefield 5 end up the way it did? On June 28th, 2018, the Battlefield 5 closed alpha was released to a selection of lucky players, and I was excited to play a new game after playing Battlefield 1 for so long. Immediately, the quality issues were very apparent, even for a game in the alpha state. Basic, crucial aspects of the game were bugged or even non-functional. Getting stuck in a permanent down state and being forced to leave the game wasn't an uncommon occurrence. The quality concerns only grew throughout the second alpha and the open beta. As the release day got closer and closer, it was obvious that a lot of work had to be done to the game to get it to a playable state. Could DICE actually pull this off, or is Battlefield 5 going to be plagued with quality issues forever? After extensively playing through all the early access events, I, alongside many other players, were feeling very worried for the release of the game. After experiencing Battlefield 1's slew of issues, I personally didn't have any confidence in DICE's ability to get Battlefield 5 up to snuff in the time frame that they were given. Even with the never-ending cloud of doubt, a lot of us still wanted to see the game succeed and have a good launch. On November 9th, 2018, Battlefield 5 fully released to the world. Unsurprisingly, the game was still in an unacceptable state of disrepair. I will admit, I was personally trying to focus on learning the game and improving for the sake of my stream. I tried my best to put the game's issues on the back burner, but that was nearly impossible. Many bugs that were in the early access stints of the game were still in the game full force. The game had already had a negative light cast onto it, and a bad launch only made it worse. Let's get into the good stuff now. Battlefield 5 was the Battlefield game to finally remove suppression after four games of complaining from the community. Removing suppression was genuinely one of the only things they got right in this game. That being said, Battlefield 5's mechanics are largely extremely frustrating. The most frustrating mechanic that was introduced was attrition, which reduced ammo counts and removed health regeneration to full HP. The marketing gimmick for attrition was that it increased team play, but that clearly isn't the case. Not only did attrition fail at increasing team play, it actively makes the game less fun. Attrition is intentionally designed to hinder skilled players because they are the ones that actually survive long enough to run out of ammo and to take on the effects of health attrition after multiple gunfights. DICE wanted to mitigate the potential strength of skilled individual players. Movement mechanics are similarly frustrating in Battlefield 5. The movement in general lacks fluidity, and it doesn't offer any advanced movement options for players that wish to differentiate themselves through movement, like you could in Battlefield 4. You cannot crouch spam, drop shot, or change direction in air in Battlefield 5 whatsoever. Vaulting is inconsistent and unreliable, and you get stuck on the ground too often. Battlefield 5's slide feature also suffers from an overly aggressive turn cap, which restricts your ability to look around freely while sliding. And, in my opinion, your hipfire spread increases a bit too much while performing a slide as well, which reduces its viability as a movement option. One of the most overlooked changes that affects how you can use the movement was made in a patch on April 5th, 2019. The change they made was attaching your weapon's recoil to the sight, rather than keeping it attached to the center of your screen. If you were unaware, pretty much every single FPS game that you've ever played has had the recoil attached to the center of your screen. 
How does this affect a movement? It affects your ability to jump shot someone, because you can no longer place the center of your screen over the enemy's body, and no it will hit them. When you try to jump shot somebody after this change, you have to wait for your weapon's lengthy landing animation after a jump to stop over the enemy's body, which slows down gameplay and lowers the skill ceiling. This change was entirely unneeded. Speaking of recoil, let's talk about how Battlefield 5's gunplay functions. Battlefield 5's gunplay is widely regarded by the community as the best gunplay the franchise has ever seen. But when you look deeper into how it actually works, it becomes very apparent that it isn't. Battlefield 5's recoil system features something called spread to recoil conversion. If you've ever wondered why your weapon randomly decides to flop all over the place, this is the mechanic responsible. The way it works is it takes the spread in the game and transforms it into recoil. The problem with that is it stacks on top of already existing recoil values, making for an extremely inconsistent and frustrating experience. As a player, you have no control over this and you have no idea when a sudden jump in recoil is going to happen. This is an objectively bad mechanic. While we're on the topic of gunplay, let's talk about the weapons themselves. The weapon balance in BF5 is plagued by one or two weapons in each class, completely outclassing all the other weapons. This includes secondaries. Contrary to what DICE was saying, the 5.2 time to kill patch and current time to kill patch only made the weapon balance worse. The viability of a weapon also relies far too heavily on what specs the weapon has available to it. In Battlefield 5, if a weapon doesn't have the lightened stock perk, which increases strafe speed while ADS'd, available to it, it's basically just not worth using most of the time. Battlefield 5 also introduced MMGs and anti-tank rifles, which require the bipod to be deployed in order to be used. These weapon types only promote an extremely lazy and camp-heavy playstyle, and should never return to any Battlefield game. Vehicle balance is similarly awful. I do not have the experience of a competitive vehicle player, but I did dabble in all vehicle types at a decent level in Battlefield 3 and 4, so I will keep this brief. Battlefield 5's vehicle balance is the worst I've ever seen. The vehicles have been entirely gutted of skilled mechanics, so even the worst of players can jump in and do fairly well. Skilled dogfighting has been entirely destroyed and replaced with an extremely shallow flying experience. Most importantly, the choose your vehicle concept, which carried over from Battlefield 1, leads to drastic balance issues in games and total domination by certain planes and tanks. Going back to the predetermined vehicle sets on maps like Battlefield 4 had would easily fix this. Glancing blows, a mechanic where your anti-vehicle weapons deflect off of an armored surface at certain angles, only makes vehicle fights more inconsistent. You shouldn't have to worry about your rocket doing 1 damage instead of it doing 25 to the tank you just shot. That is, if you actually heard or saw the tank, audio has been an issue in Battlefield 5 since the very start, and it hasn't improved dramatically whatsoever. Sometimes you can hear an enemy's footsteps perfectly, and sometimes you can't even hear a tiger tank rolling up behind you. For some reason, your own character's footstep volume and your teammate's footstep volume are far louder than they need to be which can be extremely confusing in certain scenarios. Visibility is also a massive issue in Battlefield 5, but at least they added soldier illumination in an attempt to remedy the situation. The visibility is still far from what it should be though. Spotting dramatically helps visibility in Battlefield 5, but the problem with spotting is that it's a bit too easy to spot people in this game. I think the way you remedy that is to return to the way Battlefield 4 handled spotting and take away overpowered gadgets like the spotting flare from the recon class. Battlefield 5 also introduced many unneeded animations that hinder gameplay. I'll start off by saying the roll animation is actually a very cool idea, and more often than not, it saves you from dying from fall damage. The revive animation is too long and too risky for a fast-paced game like Battlefield. Vehicle exit animations are also unneeded, as most of the time you just end up dying. However, I agree with having vehicle entry animations, because I believe there should be a short window that allows you to deny a player from entering a vehicle. The healing animation is also unneeded. A better healing system would be to delete the animation entirely, delay the start of the heal by a very short time, and restrict activation of the self-heal while shooting. Lastly, we get to netcode. Nothing is worse than playing a game you cannot trust. Dying around corners happens far too often, and this needs to be addressed in future titles. Battlefield 5's maps are hit or miss at best, and how much fun you have on them is largely dependent on what game mode you play them on. The best maps that consistently play well in multiple modes, in my opinion, 
are Devastation, Almarge Encampment, Fiel 652, Merida, Mercury, Aras, and Rotterdam. Battlefield 5's map design suffers from what I like to call a flat open area with no cover in sight for 150 meters syndrome. All jokes aside, there are too many open areas on the map, and some maps are just large for the sake of being large. Seriously, I'm lost on some of these maps. Al Sandan, Twisted Steel, Panzerstorm, Iwo Jima, Pacific Storm, Hamada, and the newly added Province 64 player variant are the worst offenders of that. On top of having little cover in these maps to begin with, you can entirely destroy what little cover there is. Destruction has been a part of Battlefield games for a long time, but they've gone overboard with it since Battlefield 1. You can have destruction without entirely destroying the intended map flow and playability of an area. Solomon Island's Conquest Sea Point can be entirely leveled to the bamboo flooring, leaving the flag bare and coverless. This is just not needed. A better way to handle destruction is to make sure that the area's most destroyed state, there are at least a few walls that cover half the player model along with assorted hardcover areas. You might say, Anders, what about fortifications? The fortification system is a different is, is a decent concept, but generally it just distracts a portion of your teammates, rendering them useless for a large portion of the match. As their main focus is me build barbed wire. As for modes, Battlefield 5 has quite the selection. That is, if the UI will allow it. Let's talk about one of the flagship game modes of Battlefield 5, Grand Operations. Grand Operations was meant to be the spiritual successor to Battlefield 1's fan favorite mode, Operations, but for some reason, they felt that they had to reinvent the wheel with an already extremely successful mode, and ran it into the ground. For whatever reason, the first two days of Grand Operations don't matter at all. All you have to do to win a round of operations is win the third day, and you'll win the entire thing regardless of if you lost the first two days or not. Rush also made a return in Battlefield 5, and oh boy, what an absolute disaster. Rush is a shadow of its former self. I'm not even sure you can call it Rush anymore. It appears to have been designed in 20 minutes by an intern who just finished up picking up the office coffee. Frontlines, another fan favorite, was also a part of Battlefield 5, but sadly, it was removed early on in the game's life cycle alongside the removal of Domination. Battlefield 5 was also supposed to have a 5v5 competitive mode, but unsurprisingly, that was cancelled. Lastly, we get to the largest and most controversial mode of all, Firestorm. I, alongside many others, didn't want a Battle Royale game in Battlefield, but you cannot blame them for trying to get their piece of the pie at the time. Firestorm was developed by Criterion Games, and to be honest, it wasn't that bad in my opinion. Most of my complaints about Firestorm were related to the looting system and a few irritating bugs. That being said, the mode never stood a chance against Apex Legends and Fortnite, who are both free to play in much higher quality, leaving Firestorm in the dust to rot behind his paywall and lack of interest. Anti-cheat is one of the most important aspects of modern video games. I am not exaggerating when I say I have seen more legitimate players get wrongfully banned in Battlefield 5 than actual cheaters. As a streamer who plays on PC, your stream and the server you're playing on is at the mercy of cheaters 24-7. There is nowhere to hide because there are no private servers. Adding a stream delay or hiding your screen does nothing because adding a stream delay and hiding your screen does not hide what map and mode you're playing on, and reporting them is futile. Necro, a longtime streamer and friend, had 5,000 viewers on the front page of Twitch when he was getting relentlessly hunted by a blatant aimbotter. Luckily, Necro also plays Battlefield on console. If Necro didn't have the option to switch to console, he would have had to end his stream or sit there in front of 5,000 people getting hunted by a cheater with no hope of him getting banned. I've personally been hunted relentlessly by the same three cheaters for over a year. The cheaters following me became so well known that they were notorious on NA and EU servers at the same time. I even went as far as publicly asking community managers to help me get them banned, but even they couldn't do anything. When I asked why, they simply said that they aren't the ones that make the bans and that no further information can be divulged. This isn't a new thing for people streaming Battlefield either. This has been going on for over six years. And it's still this bad. The fact that this can go on for so long, so publicly, to so many people across multiple titles is absolutely unacceptable and one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen.
Another equally frustrating and embarrassing aspect of Battlefield 5 is the lack of a team balancer. The complete lack of a team balancer and a team switch option leaves servers lopsided and unfun, causing people to leave more often than not. In Battlefield 4 and 1, in a lopsided match, the main players doing the fragging would typically switch to the other team to balance the server back to a playable state, but you are unable to do this in Battlefield 5. The ability to balance yourself via team switch entirely outweighs the cons of having a team switch option. The live service model has recently become a very popular model for games, and with great success if done correctly. Apex Legends, Fortnite, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 are just some of the games that have correctly used the live service model to deliver content. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Battlefield 5's live service model. Battlefield 5's live service model features a chapter system and something called Tides of War, which is kind of like a battle pass system for free. Tides of War features cosmetics, weapons, and other rewards that were attained through completing challenges. Tides of War started out okay, but later on in the game's life cycle it dropped off heavily. At one point, the Tides of War rewards were tier skips for the majority of the chapter, exposing how little content they actually had. The amount of unreleased content in Battlefield 5 is surprising as well. Some of the weapons, like the Show Shot, have been in the game since release, and have only been recently given to us and others will never see the light of day. This speaks to the level of intentional drip feeding that went on with Battlefield 5, and gives some insight as to why the game's support was eventually cancelled. The progression inside of Battlefield 5 was lackluster as well. The assignment system featured challenges that were very unrealistic for some weapon types, and actually impacted your system's performance if you had multiple assignments equipped at the same time. The majority of the progression consists of climbing towards rank 500, which simply isn't enticing for the majority of people. Dog tags are very underwhelming, and do not offer any awesome designs to show off like other battlefields did. Lastly, we get to some of the most controversial events that happened in Battlefield 5, the time to kill changes and the lack of a functional rental server program, or RSP for short. There were two major time to kill changes that both just happened to occur near Christmas time. Wow, I mean that's just a, that's a massive coincidence, isn't it? Not only did they change the time to kill once completely against the community's wishes, they changed it twice! The first time to kill change happened on December 12, 2018, and it was quickly reverted five days later after the absolutely vicious backlash across all social media. Then, about a year later on December 5, 2019, they changed the time to kill again, even after seeing the monumental backlash from the first time they changed it. Both patches claimed to balance the game's weapons better, but all they did was make the weapon balance worse than it originally was, on top of making the game an absolute chore to play. I don't know who made the decision to change the time to kill, but clearly they're not interested in keeping their players happy. Another thing that discouraged a lot of people was the complete lack of a functional rental server program in the game at launch, or RSP. RSP servers are largely the reason why you can go back and play fan-favorite Battlefield games like Battlefield 3 and 4. RSP has its problems, but I believe that most of them can be fixed, and it's essential to Battlefield as a whole. Battlefield 5 received its version of RSP, called Community Games, and unsurprisingly it was a completely gutted version of what the community actually wanted. More options were promised to come, but at the time of this video they have not been added to the game. Battlefield 5's Community Games do not function like we thought they would. If the owner of the server leaves the server, it will disappear after a short time, and after a maximum of 20 games the server will shut down instead of cycling back through the rotation you just made. Because of how community games function, nobody uses them. Funnily enough, community games served better for competitive events and filming cinematic sequences than anything else. Now that I've gone through all the specifics, let's get into the advice for future titles. For starters, Battlefield is literally the only AAA FPS game I can name without a competitive scene. There is so much missed potential just waiting to be realized. Wizard 101 has more of a competitive scene than Battlefield does, and that is purely because Battlefield's comp scene has not been allowed to grow, and the older competitive players have been successfully killed off thanks to Battlefield 1 and 5. In order to grow the competitive scene, and please everyone else, some sort of RSP or private game system must be in the game at launch. If you put RSP or a private match system in the game at launch, the community will take care of the rest. As far as game modes, I recommend keeping it simple. The game modes that should stay in the future titles are Battlefield 1 style operations, Team Deathmatch, Conquest, Breakthrough, Frontlines, and a smaller 5v5 to 8v8 3-point game mode. 
Rush can also come back, but it has to be properly designed. Mechanics-wise, I love that suppression was removed, the squad revive system was introduced, and that ammo and health can be picked up off of teammates without them having to put it down manually. I think all of those are worthy of going into future titles. Anti-cheat has to be a very high priority in the next title. The cheating situation simply cannot be allowed to go on the way it has any longer, especially with Battlefield coming back to Steam. Netcode slash networking must also be a very high priority, as it will make the game more enjoyable for everyone. I believe that the netcode is one of the most important aspects of the game, simply because of how much it affects the gameplay. If you can't trust the game, what's the point? For the sake of making the game more accessible, performance optimization should be heavily prioritized. I personally get 350 to 600 FPS on Battlefield 4, compared to 125 to 200 FPS on Battlefield 5 with all those settings, and I have a very high-end computer. That is a 66% drop in performance at the high end for a game that really doesn't look that much better than Battlefield 4 in my opinion. A return to a Battlefield 4 style HUD and UI system with multiple opacity sliders would be very welcome as well. Kit switching should also permanently return, as it is a unique part of Battlefield and allows you to adapt on the fly. Vehicle balance should be more like Battlefield 4, as it provides a more consistent gameplay experience. Dice. You simply don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time a new Battlefield comes out. Thank you all so much for watching. I put a lot of thought into this video, and it means a lot that you watch it all the way through. Battlefield 5 was a game that could have been so much more, and it's sad to see the situation that it got into. I hope that some positives were taken away from this video, as I genuinely hope the next Battlefield title is better. I'd like to personally thank Marble Duck, Rose, KHT120, Gravity, Nickel BF, Crooked, Fizz, and Baranox for helping me make this video. All of my socials, as well as theirs, can be found in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy Battlefield content, make sure to check out my Twitch channel where I stream every single day. Feel free to join my Discord as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.